swollen, guys. Hit it. We're officially halfway through our retrospective on alternatives to the giant Tony Hawk's Pro Skater franchise. So far we've seen mostly average to poor results, but I'm hoping that today ESPN and Konami can make a big splash. Releasing just several weeks prior to one of the highest rated skateboarding games of all time, X Games Skateboarding is one in a long line of ESPN branded sports titles. Of course, the huge channel needs little introduction, along with the X Games, home to some of the greatest moments in extreme sports history. This wasn't the first time a skateboarding game was attempted by the brand. In 1995, there was a PlayStation and DOS title known originally as ESPN Extreme Games, which featured some skateboarding events. They're more like combative races akin to the Road Rash games. Ultimately, the ESPN license expired and so the game was rebranded into the short-lived Extreme Trilogy, which to my understanding, all featured much of the same type of gameplay. I never really played them much, to be honest, but what I did play didn't exactly pique my interest either, so let's just leave it at that. But now with THBS popping off and everyone looking for a piece of the pie, why not Konami of all teams to develop a title centred around the X Games for the PlayStation 2? The game opens to a really good intro montage of skate clips set to A Place For My Head by Linkin Park, which is an absolute banger. It looks promising, but I've learned never to judge a game by its cover. Investigating the tutorial, I can confirm the similarity in the control scheme to Pro Skater, so they got that much right, but just ask Andy McDonald and MTV why that's not enough to make it. This, despite being heavier than THPS, still controls well enough. It feels like an evolution on what Grind Session tried to do by grounding the experience in some semblance of reality, focusing on the ground and technical lines. This means that when we move into the vert ramp in X Games mode that it can feel a bit restrictive trying to build up a solid combination of moves at first. It's just a bit stiff for my liking. The same goes for the skate park event as well. We've got 8 pros to select from including Burnquist, Kerry Getz, Fernandez and Ueda. Despite their different stat points, there are no dramatic differences to how they feel honestly. But yeah, this X Games street competition is just awkward due to the layout of the park. Maybe I just need a little more time to adjust to the way these controls feel. I mean, the game's not bad, but it is different, and I have a lot of muscle memory that needs replacing. So let's see what else there is to do here. The competitions, they don't really offer that much if you ask me. Going into arcade mode, we can already see a clear improvement in how things flow. We've got a 3 minute timer to complete objectives like high scores, smashing objects and collecting spots in a particular order. We're all familiar with how this works by now, right? It gets the job done and scratches a particular itch, but with the bland level design, it fails to set itself apart in my opinion. There are so few objects to skate, some of these locations are too realistic if you get what I mean. They're not skater friendly, like the museum level with hallways and awkward shit littered all over the map. The wider environments like the San Francisco streets are a lot more fun as you can hopefully find a good, natural line between the different objects. Even still, however, it can be a pain in the ass to line yourself up properly to hit certain obstacles. We don't really have any camera control here, the right stick merely shuffles through the different songs. So if we can't look around, accessing hidden areas gets overly frustrating at times, and this is made even worse by the draw distance. Graphically, the game looks fine overall, with nice texture quality and plenty of vibrant colour, but look at that draw distance! Shit just pops in on the horizon all the time. It's like I'm playing a PS1 game, and that is honestly insulting to the PS1. I do appreciate the map being there, as it often points to important items that we're hunting down amidst the foggy field of view, but it does remove much of the challenge here. Going from level to level with the exact same goals with next to no variation in challenge leaves a lot to be desired. 
I am very happy to report, though, that we can swap out whichever character we want and continue playing through the career, which makes me very happy. This is a minor thing to a lot of people, but I always prefer arcade titles that allow for this to happen. It's something Pro Skater struggled with all the way through until its remake in 2020. Even then, things still need shaking up either through some variety in our objectives or the challenge at hand. Why not include a downhill course to mix things up? The campaign is sadly incredibly short, with only six levels taking us from Los Angeles. Which, I mean, if it wasn't called that, then you'd never know because nothing about this resembles LA. Whereas New York looks like the bombed-in ruins underground in Futurama. And there is also a Titanic level. Literally just the Titanic. It's funny how Pro Skater 3 also had a level set on a cruise ship. Take a guess which one I'd rather play. And ending off in the ruins, I'm never opposed to fun locations in these sorts of games, but I was expecting ESPN and X Games to take a much more grounded, realistic setting. Whatever, it's still so brief. Even though you do get a harder alternative campaign by completing it, that's not enough for me, sorry. It's a shame because it's definitely not the worst thing to play now that I've adjusted to the minor differences in controls. I actually want more of this. But X Games mode it really doesn't offer us anything. They probably should have just included these competitions within the main career. The only other change that I'd suggest is that the game needed to pick a side, arcade or simulation, and then go with it fully. Without that clear focus, it's floating in this weird grey area without an identity. Had it included serious tech lines like we saw in Grind Session, that might have helped it to swing one way or another instead of merely fence sitting. Despite all of that, the end result here is another game that showed potential but is far, far from being the Hawk Killer. It just doesn't do enough to innovate or improve on what they were doing over at Neversoft, and that's not me playing favourites, it's simply the truth. Still, I do want to praise this game for making some reasonably fun locations with hidden areas to discover, for being incredibly consistent, and not making a mockery of the sport. So, ESPN X Games Skateboarding gets 5 out of 10. There's definitely room for improvement, as it's not good, but it's not bad either, and that's the takeaway here. Now, fun fact, this would not be Konami's final skateboarding game. If you recall last year, I reviewed Disney Sports Skateboarding on the GameCube, which was an abhorrent disaster to say the least. But in 2002, the same year, they would also publish Evolution Skateboarding on both GameCube and PlayStation 2. That's what I've got in store for you tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so that you don't miss out. But before we finish off today's video, I still have one more game to discuss. That being ESPN X Games Skateboarding on the Game Boy Advance. I don't really know what to expect from this one, to be honest. I've played some decent portable skateboarding titles in my time, along with a slew of forgettable garbage, so let's just see, shall we? There won't be any pro skater objectives here, we're strictly focused on X game competitions. Vert is about what you'd expect from this type of game, but I will admit, for this 2D halfpipe shit, this is definitely one of the better examples of it that I can think of. California Games, Skate or Die, Pro Skater on Game Boy Color, all shit for the birds, so even though this is incredibly basic, it does get the job done, I suppose. Damn, it's hard though. <laughs> Look how defeated he is. I love that. Let's try out the skate park competition and see if that's any better. Ah, what the hell is happening? Oh god, oh shit! Man, this is awful. Okay, so you roam the park in an overhead perspective and as you approach different obstacles, the game switches to side-scrolling. This is so jarring. It's next to impossible to do anything. Just look at this. I don't think I've ever seen a skateboarding game this janky to play. And I've played skateboarding on Atari 2600. I'd expect a game that old and limited to play like shit. Not a game on the same system as Pro Skater's amazing ports. This is just pure awful. You'd think that might be it, but no. As you can see, it's telling me to play X-Rage mode to increase my stat points. X-Rage mode? 
In this mode, it's more half-pipe fun as we build up our rage meter at the bottom there, and when it's maxed out, a crystal drops down onto the course and... Holy shit! Come on, bust some sick air moves, dude! That's... That's fucking awesome! You do as many special tricks as you can to build up your meter, launch high up into the sky into a thunderstorm, and once you're surging with power, we get to defeat a dragon for some gems. Oh man, that is fucking hardcore right there. Love this shit. And then you can use those gems to improve your stat points if you collect enough of them. You'd have to play this so much, but good, because it's one of the best things I've ever seen in a skateboarding game after all of these years. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, let's get real here. This game is not worth playing. Though it might include the best 2D halfpipe I've ever seen in a video game, there is so much wrong with this that it can't do any better than a 2 out of 10. Even still, dude. Skateboarding dragon battles? Oh, that's fucking rad. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends on social media. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.